what were you, how you, what were you in particular? Sure, I thought Elijah had an outstanding camp. He's a guy that can do a lot of things, very skilled receiver, inside, outside, can do stuff out of the backfield. That was impressive to see. Um, for a rookie, I thought Cedric had a really good camp, um, coming in and learning the system, um, putting all the pieces together, had some mistakes, but really made some plays on the ball, which was good to see. Uh, you know, Dalen Baldwin's Mr. Reliable. He's out there. He can play him in multiple positions. So those young guys got a lot of good reps and did some good stuff. Alex, how do you go about kind of filling that void that Marquise was supposed to fill, right? That deep threat that got that stretches the field. Sure. Well, we just got to find somebody else that can come in and do it. You know, we have able bodies on the on the on the roster right now. Um, you know, Schwartz is a guy that can take the top off. Jalen Darden's a guy that can take the top off. Elijah, when we need him to, can take the top off. So we have bodies for that that style of play. You know, hopefully we can get Marquise back and everything's going to be okay there. It, but it looked like in the in the full speed uh, red zone drills that the defense might have had the better. Of course, do you, yeah. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. No, and I told the guys this morning it's hard. It's hard down there. You get inside that five yard line, that eight yard line, and it's. It's a pass drill. It's 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 skeleton. Um, the situations we had four point plays the other day. We're not going to hand the ball off from the eighth to Nick Chubb and let him run in. So it, it is hard. The, the space is smaller. Um, you know the, the the open receivers aren't as open. There's contested catches. There's high balls in the back of the end zone, and it's a good challenge for us. Um, you know we are going to continue to you know get good at what we do exactly. And then when they play great coverage, it's hard it's hard to win down there in tight spaces. But I told the guys this morning, again, we're not game planning against our defense. We're not trying to change plays to win the, win the drill. We're going to run our plays and get really good at those. And then remember, hey, we have running backs. We have things we're going to do down in there, not just drop back and throw the ball every time. Absolutely. Alex, I know you guys are still a work in progress, but what, what do you like about this offensive group right now? What are they doing well right now? Uh, work is the first thing. I know we're a work in progress, but those guys come out and they work every day. Um, it's really been impressive. We've had some really, really good um, two-spot walkthroughs in the afternoon periods where the young guys get to go over and call the same plays that the, the ones are on the other field. You know, we've worked blitz. We've worked um, no huddle, QB runs. We've done all kinds of stuff. I think just, you know, what we've got accomplished in that short time of eight days, I think we feel really good that it was very productive. Anthony Schwartz had a tough year last year. What is his attitude like? Good. You know, he comes out and works when he, you know when he gets out there. He flies around and he definitely shows you the speed that you need. It's just uh, you know he's just got to make the plays when they come to him and he will. With Elijah, obviously you guys are using him all over the place. What do you like best about him when he's lined up in the backfield? His ability to one carry the ball and then run routes out of that backfield. Maybe you know if they want to leave a linebacker in the game and try to match up with that. Um, and obviously the advantage would go to him. Um, but he does a lot of good things out of the backfield. Um, you know we had uh, Randall Cobb in Green Bay and he was in the backfield a lot as a ball carrier, as a bubble catcher, all the things you can do, free release, and motion him out and create empties. So um, he has that versatility where you can hand him the ball as well. Do you think you need to hand it to him, like your defenses, to respect that he might get the ball? I would think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. It's number 80 plays full season in the spring. Uh, Watkins. Watkins, yes. Does he look like a player to you? I mean, really impressive. Came in late and really picked up the offense. Uh, very few mental errors. Seems to have a good grasp of it. Makes plays when they come to him, and he can, he's another guy that can run. So I've been impressed with his ability to pick up the offense as quickly as he has. I'm sure it's like this with most quarterbacks because it takes to be great. But, you know, I do see Deshaun doing so many different things after practice, you know, working on just arm angles and mm -hmm. hand things, footwork and all that kind of stuff. Is he, like, way up there just in terms of grinding and, and, and working extra and other things? Um, I saw the same thing you saw. You know, those are those are drills that he he stays out late. I think he was maybe one or two guys left on the field the other day. Um, you know, that's that's really the guys that are great are the guys that are motivated to work until you know they they've finished the day and his day didn't finish when practice was over. So the, you want you want your leaders to set that example and work extra hard, especially at that position. The opportunity seems to be knocking for Jerome Ford to be that number two back behind him. Just what have you seen from him and um, you know? What dimension do you think he can bring in that role? Yeah, I see a, a young player that's really matured over the offseason and starting to come into his own as far as his understanding of the system, um, especially in the protection phase. Um, he has the ability also to come out of the backfield and make plays in the pass game, and he has some really great feet and vision in the run game. So excited to see him as we move forward. Uh, I feel very comfortable with him as our backup right now. Hey, Alex, I'm we're, so, we're, on, on that, how would you talk about, how would you look at it? It seemed like a diminished value of running backs. You know, when you look at like Dalvin Cook, Kareem, Zico, how do you see that diminished value? Um, that's not really in my area. I know we have a good one and I'm happy that we do. You know, that's that's where that is. Um, 
it, it's it seems to have devalued over the you know past 10 years. But I guess I would say if you went into a season that didn't have one a running back, you'd be in, in bad shape. So we're fortunate that we have a great one here. I know Jordan Akins hasn't practiced the last couple of days, but what does he add to this offensive passing game? You know, his strength obviously is in the pass game, his ability to run vertically with speed, and his ability to make plays on the ball. His hands are strong. Uh, had a big catch over top of a defender the other day, things like that. He runs really good routes, strong hands. Alex, Alex, we're probably going to see a lot of Kellen and, and DTR on Thursday. How have, what have you seen out of both of them in terms of their maturation, their growth? Sure. That, that you're kind of excited to see, on, you know, out there on Thursday. Absolutely. Both those guys have had a really good camp. Um, you know, they've had limited reps at times, kind of switching days back and forth between who gets those set of reps. Um, you know, for, for DTR, it's just continue to grow. Kellen's a little bit of a head as far as mentally being in the system longer. But both those guys, they go out there, they, they, they're exceptional with their footwork, their timing, and their ability to get through progression. So excited to see that live and then add the element of them using their legs as well. I think it's going to be a fun night. Kellen, I was going to ask you about Deshaun using his legs. Mm -hmm. What is your philosophy in terms of how much should he run? Do you have to strike a balance between keeping him safe and letting him use that talent that he has? How do you it's a natural thing for him, you know. When he feels that he goes, I think that's something that that's that's fine with us. Um, always encouraging him to continue through the progression. Um, don't skip a step. And then if there, you get to the last part of that progression and there's nothing there, then take off. So continue to coach through the progression and then allowing him to be be uh, special in the, when he does escape. Uh, it, it, it is. It's good. And it's great that they're getting the reps Thursday. Um, the practices have been great. Again, I uh, can't say enough about James Hudson. He's a guy now in year three that's really figured it out and really matured as in becoming a really good pro. And then Wheatley on the other side has done a really nice job as well. So I, I, I like our depth there. Um, you know, it'll be important in these preseason games to see them play. Alex, to go back to Cedric, I know I think when you guys drafted him, I think it was Andrew like described his demeanor as he's going to work first and not really talk. I guess have you seen that through these these early? Practices? Uh, uh, you know, a thousand percent. He just he just goes out and grinds, does this great job. All those receivers we had a practice the other day, their effort down the field blocking, uh, just a just it was inspiring. To make sure we pointed it out to everybody to see those guys. They work hard. You know, CO does a great job with those guys getting them ready to play, and Ced's a guy that's a you know he's not going to say anything. He's going to go out and do his job.